Number 15 then from the 2009 Vans Tyre. Solve the differential equation given these initial conditions here. Well, what kind of equation we got? Well, it's just a first order one, but it's not a separable type. That's because what we've got here is the integrating factor type. Now, the integrating factor type just means I'm going to be using the product rule for differentiation. I'm trying to establish the product rule because what have you got here? I've got y and its derivative there. So if I had a function and its derivative there, that could go back to the product rule. Well, first of all, split that up. So it just says dy by dx. So divide everything by x plus 1, so it'll be minus 3 over x plus 1, y, and divide that side as well. So I'll just drop down to cubed. That makes it clearer. <coughs> the integrating factor method means, is there something I can put here so that when that multiplies all, doesn't matter about multiply that side, when that multiplies those parts, then that would have this thing here with its product as its derivative. The only thing that works for would be e. If you've got e to some function and you differentiate that, you get e to that function times its derivative, the derivative of the inner function. And that's the pattern you're going to establish. In other words, if that is this part, then I want to find this. And of course, that just means I'm going to integrate that back up again. And that's the pattern you use. Give it a name if you like. Sometimes you use p of x for that. But effectively, this was what would have been that derivative. So I've got negative. 3 upon x plus 1, I want to integrate that. If I integrate that up and then do e to the power of that, sometimes you call that p of x, and then you're going to use your integrating factor e to the p of x, if you like. But you don't really need these names. So, what does that go back up to? Well, straight away, that's just power underneath, so that's a log. So what I've got is I've got negative 3 ln of x plus 1. Now I want to do e to the power of that for the integrating factor. If I want e to the power of that, I can't actually use that straight away because that negative 3 is in the way. But that's easy enough because I just rearrange it to e to the ln of and I've got 1 over because it's by the power negative 3 which is 1 over 1 over x plus 1 cubed. And so that would equal then 1 over x plus 1 cubed. So now I'm away from the dangers of the logarithms, I'll just call that 1 over x plus 1 cubed. So if you multiply everything by 1 over x plus 1 cubed, you'd have this. So that was your integrating factor, x plus 1 cubed. Multiply that by it, multiply this by it, and I've now got x plus 1 to the power 4, and very nicely when I multiply that by it, I've just got 1. And that's handy, and I forgot the little y there. And that's handy because there's your product rule for differentiation. If you differentiate that, then you'd be multiplied by the power, which is a negative 3. Take one off the power so it drops to the 4. There it is. Which means what you've got there is you've got d by dx of 1, if I just keep them separate, cubed times y to equal 1, meaning differentiate that product. That's the principle for the integrating factor. It only works if you can find some function to multiply by that's going to give you the product rule. And then just taking that over and integrating. So I've got, oh, somebody didn't like that out there. So I've got this equals dx. Integrate both sides up. Well, that's easy. It's just dx. I don't even need to put the integrals in because that'll just go back to x and that'll just go back up to whatever that, of course, that was its own differential. So that's just going to go up to x plus 1 times y equals x plus c. You could have popped the derivatives in, the integrals in if you like there. There you go there, that'll keep you happy. Now, as soon as c appears, let's get rid of it. So it says, when x is 1, y is 16. I'll just put this down over here. When x is 1, so that's going to be 1 and 1 is 2, cubed is 8. y is 16, equals when x is 1 plus c, 8 to 16 goes 2. So 2 is 1 plus c, which means c equals 1. So I've got 1 over x plus 1 cubed y equals x plus 1. Bring that across. x plus 1 to the power 4. Very neat and tidy. There it is. Part B. Find the area enclosed by the graphs of the function you just had and 
y, 1 minus x to the power 4 and the x axis. Well, what would they look like? Well, the one you just got was x plus 1 to the power 4. Now, those are both just transformations of the x to the power 4 graph. So, as a quick sketch then of what the area would look like, would be this. Well, x to the power 4 would look very similar to it, but plus 1 would mean that it would be shifted back 1. So, that graph should look something like this. Well, that's been shifted back 1, so that must be at negative 1. That would be y equals x plus 1 to the power 4. If you like, you could check those numbers just by rattling through the points of intersection with the axis. I'll just do that then. If x is 0, then y is 1. And if y is 0, that means x equals negative 1. That's right. So that's obviously through the point at 1. Now this is also a transformation of the graph of y equals x to the 4. Because what happens here is I've got a plus 1, the same as this plus 1, but I've got a negative x. And a negative x just means you're flipping over, flipping over the y-axis. But the correct order is take away the 1 first. So what this one would do would be the same as that when it's going to move back 1, but then I'm going to flip it over. So it's going to end up looking like this. But it's essentially the same graph, so that should cut at 1. And you can check those numbers are just the same. When y is, I'll just go through them, when x is 0, y is 1, and when y is 0, that means that x is, again, 1. There it's over there. So the area they're looking for is from these two, and these are two identical graphs, is this area in here. Which, of course, will just be twice one of the halves. So what's that all together? So the area looking for would be twice the area from 0 to 1 of the upper, so I'm going to be using this one since I'm using this side, that's this one here, minus the lower, which is just y equals 0. So it'll just be 1 minus x to the power 4 dx. And that's an easy one, because that's just a function of a linear function. So that's just going to be add 1 to the power and then divide by that power. Then divide by the derivative of the inner one, so that's divide by negative 1, so that makes that negative. And then evaluate that, don't need to evaluate that part, from 0 to 1. So what I've got then is negative 2 fifths of minus a value to the 0, that's 1 minus 0. So you've got negative 2 fifths of, that's 0, take away 1, which is negative 1, which then just comes to 2 fifths. 2 fifths square units.